Welcome to SOS Media, your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. Robert Sylvester Kelly was born on January 8, 1967 in Chicago, Illinois. R. Kelly as he is commonly known as an American singer, songwriter and record producer. R. Kelly has released 12 studio albums and 3 collaboration albums. He has been nominated for 24 Grammy Awards from which he has been able to impressively win 3. He is also known for the hit songs Ignition, I Believe I Can Fly in the Trapped in the Closet series of songs. He sold more albums than any other male Rand B music artist in the 1990s. R. Kelly produced Aaliyah's 1994 first album Age Ain't Nothing But a Number. In 1996, R. Kelly was nominated for a Grammy Award for writing Michael Jackson's song You Are Not Alone. Sometimes one cannot fail to wonder as to why R. Kelly cases have been handled the way they have not only with an unacceptable margin of error both in legal interpretations of the current laws and statutes of the land, but also the daylight bias portrayed during both his New York and Chicago trials. We know that R. Kelly is a man of status who seems to have been a victim of a deep-rooted conspiracy willing to do whatever it takes, to make sure that this man's finances are siphoned from his huge accounts and his life turned upside down forever. From the accusations to the trials and judgments, all seems not to be right. Judge Ann Donnelly demonstrated impermissible bias when she openly said that she had her mind made up when sentencing R. Kelly. This unfortunate statement led to people questioning as to whether the trial court statements to defendant R. Kelly, claiming that he looked like a criminal and thus needed to prove his innocence demonstrated impermissible bias requiring reversal. We can definitely say yes but one keeps wondering as to why the judge did not find her actions strange. It kind of brings an impression that R. Kelly was sentenced even before he was convicted. We have also all along come to learn that most of the witnesses in R. Kelly's trial were subsequently found to have lied to the jury. Most of this drama came out when the then witnesses eventually got misunderstandings with each other. Some of the witnesses were being coerced by the state to actually come to court and testify against R. Kelly. Others were very sure that at the end of it all, they would walk home with huge restitution packages. Now, Let's just look at who one of the key witnesses Stephanie and how she fits in the conspiracy jig puzzle. Stephanie Lugo who is one of R. Kelly's key accuser is allegedly a niece to Ricardo Lugo who worked in Kim Fox's office, while his wife Star Jones is a TV personality that once worked in the district attorney's office in Brooklyn. Jones rose to fame as an original co-host of The View. She was on the show from 1997 to 2006. Ricardo Lugo is an administrative law judge and attorney licensed in Illinois and Wisconsin. As a civil attorney, he represented clients from every economic stratum. As a criminal litigator, he successfully fought to keep fathers from serving jail time in child support arrearage cases and has won numerous jury trials in both juvenile and adult court. As a former deputy general counsel, Chief Investigator and Chief Deputy Clerk of the Cook County Clerk of Court he managed and supervised over 50 employees consisting of investigators that were Chicago police officers and Illinois State Police officers. Stephanie was actually promised money in order to pin R. Kelly. She was initially supposed to get around $20,000 in restitution but this was later and surprisingly revised by the government to $78,981 which is almost four times the initial amount. There is also great doubt as to why the government could calculate the other accusers' due amounts but not Stephanie's. It is also on record that half of the witnesses did not get any restitution money because Judge Lyon and Weber made it categorically clear that there was no threat nor coercion when they were getting involved with R. Kelly but rather made their own personal choices. One would also be absolutely right to say that the trial court erred when it prohibited the defense counsel. Jennifer Bonjean by arguing during her closing that a witness had been motivated to lie based on the promise that she wouldn't be charged. I do still believe that it was not right for some of these witnesses to be given immunity before testifying. They after that testified the way they were coached for they knew they wouldn't be held accountable for whatever they said. Now, we are also not convinced that Judge Ann Donnelly during the New York trial allowed a witness's tape into the courtroom when that very witness was pretending to be sick. It is also subject to debate whether the trial court admission of certain social media messages made by the testifying witness to R. Kelly, was an error because the statements were inadmissible hearsay. I can tell you some people saw this injustice coming a long time ago. 
Dana Jackson, who described R. Kelly as a mentor and said the singer basically raised him asserted that he believes that R. Kelly is innocent and described the singer as God's gift. It's very hard to see a man that's been painted as a monster that I've never seen in 22 years. I've never seen none of this, Jackson said insisting that R. Kelly is falsely accused and the only thing that he could say was because he was one of the ones that had been around him for the long adventure, one thing I can say is that he is a loving person. He's like God's gift and really, God's gift to the world, Jackson added. Jackson who called R. Kelly a mentor criticized the Lifetime miniseries claiming it played on the audience's emotions to turn people against him. He's loving and always outpouring as well as always uplifting. He's always been there and Will's always that one that's there for you when you need it, Jackson said. That's why I ride the way I do meaning that I go to the ends of the earth to have him vindicated. We absolutely know that false accusation or perjury is the most common feature of wrongful convictions and has been a factor in 60% of documented exonerations. Most often witnesses lie because they receive some benefit for testifying against the defendant. For example, a person in jail facing criminal charges can secure a favorable plea bargain, dismissal of their own charges, special privileges in jail or even money by offering damning evidence against a fellow inmate. These benefits create a strong incentive to lie. Still again in many wrongful convictions, defendants are not given key information related to the credibility of the incentivized witnesses who testify against them, including the exact benefits received, the witness's history of cooperating in other cases and the witness's criminal history. Some wrongful convictions are caused by honest mistakes but in far too many cases the very people who are responsible for ensuring truth and justice including law enforcement officials and prosecutors, lose sight of these obligations and instead focus solely on securing convictions of their interest. While the majority of law enforcement officers and prosecutors are honest and trustworthy, criminal justice is a human endeavor and the possibility for negligence, misconduct and corruption exists. Even if one officer or witness of every thousand is dishonest, wrongful convictions will continue to occur here in Chicago and the United States as a whole. R. Kelly through his lead attorney Jennifer Bonjean is definitely seeking to have the appeals court reverse his convictions or order for a new trial. We are sure that attorney Jennifer Bonjean has already highlighted a lot of flaws, misinterpretations of the law and issues to do with injustice in the appeal brief. With such an articulate and experienced attorney as Bonjean, we are very optimistic that with or without an oral argument, the appeal process will be exposed the loopholes that the lower court left in R. Kelly's trial. For the rest of us who support and wish R. Kelly to regain his deserved freedom can follow the appeal process keenly optimistic that he by the end of the appeal process will be a free man. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, Please subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.